don't land. Lawyers don't buy land, but lawyers get land. Okay? So, why? That your main obligation when you come here, make sure you understand land transactions. Transactions. There are the more plots of land you're going to acquire. Okay? Okay? So, because land is the most profitable venture, I had to take time. I appreciate land transactions. So, the same knowledge I acquired because of that background, why should you guys buy land? Let us appreciate land transactions and we get land free of charge. Okay? We spent a lot of time in your school. Okay? So, as a result of that, let us understand. We shall appreciate the efforts of the backers at a later stage. Okay? Yes. That's why 90% of the young lawyers within one year, the first thing they are looking for is the gas. Land will come. Land will come. People deep there down in the village, they have problems. They don't know that processing letters of, letters of administration, taxes, we pay how much? 6,000. So you tell them, you'll give me four acres of land. Each acre of land is 25 million. But how much are you use for paying taxes? 6,000. Understand land or CDK. <laughs> okay? So you see how profitable it is? You come, you want to buy your own land using your own money. You find me in my chambers because I appreciated land transactions. I'll charge you 20% of your money to go and attend that transaction just to append my signature on your agreement. 10%. So you collect, let them collect their money. Okay? Let them go in Chikubo. Let them go to Dubai. You stay here. There is a time you're going to share that money. They will bring it. So you just appreciate this week to keep quiet. Okay? They will bring. Okay? They will steal that land. They come. You go and negotiate with this person who took the land by force, and they give you part of it. Okay? Don't worry. Land is coming. Okay? So don't waste your time. In Kampala here. Okay? <laughs> okay? So, let us commence our session. Okay? The <laughs> warrior, good day. Okay? So, this week we are dealing with land transactions. Okay? As I've always been putting it right and clear, that land transactions is a transactional cost unit. So when you are attempting this cost unit, all we want you to be looking at is a transaction. When you are dealing with land, in our first classes, we listed the different types of land transactions. We said each and every type of a transaction is a topic that you're going to be covering. We said that uh, land transactions are categorized into different transactions. The first transaction we looked at was a sale transaction. So under this, we are able to appreciate who can sell, what do you sell, and how do we sell, and the remedies, and how do we perform the sale transaction. That was term one, okay? That was term one, and the presumption is we all appreciated and we know how to draft a sales agreement, okay? Then after a sale transaction, we have another transaction, which is immediately after the sale. This is known as transfer transaction stroke the torrent system. Others call it registration. So when you are dealing with the registration, 
this is a form of transaction where one acquires ownership by registration. So you ask yourself, if you are dealing with a transaction of registration, what is the... Are you supposed to put in fraud? Okay, because registration is where interpretation of titles becomes a matter of fact. Okay, so you remember that we, where you were given a lot of titles, you had fraud, you had also look at due diligence. Okay, that so we are dealing with a transaction known as registration of the current system. Okay. Then after that transaction, we have other transactions which include one compulsory institution. So as you say, what you don't realize, okay, compulsory land acquisition. Ask yourself, land, okay. Who has the power to acquire land? We shall be able to appreciate the laws regarding that transaction if we happen to be part of it. Okay? The consequence is Nanjahar. Come in here, Rada. Okay? So, then after compulsory land acquisition, we have another transaction known as a lease transaction, where someone is going to lease his or her land. Okay, we shall also look at the law. Then after the lease transaction, we have the mortgage transaction. After the mortgage transaction, we have another form of transaction known as giving land as a gift in the vivos. Okay. And then we like have other transactions, but those transactions are basically for 30 term. That's what we call expropriated property. Okay. Expropriated property. Use of restricted land okay that is forestry wetlands etc those are gazetted lands so what does this imply that every topic is a form of transaction so whenever you get the workshop first ask yourself what transaction am i going to deal with so that you zero down the particular laws that govern that transaction okay Okay. So now, as I said, they have given you a couple of transactions in your workshop. That's why you are seeing this workshop as a little bit complex. Why? They have combined three to four transactions, and you have to appreciate them, whether you like it or, or not. Okay? So, but as you know that um, when you are dealing with land, all these are transactions, but for you to be able to know what is required of you, first ask yourself, we have what we call general restrictions to land flows are given a transaction and it has that legal restriction. You cannot go on with the transaction and people. So all of these through different stages, but each and every stage has a different problem. Okay. So the first stage is what we call preparation or entering into that transaction, that initial stage. Okay. So when you are given the workshop or the IA, first Ask yourself at what stage have, are we just going to enter into this transaction or we have already entered? So, if you have not entered into the transaction, okay, ask yourself why 
haven't these guys entered into the transaction? When you are answering the why, you will be solving what we call the legal restriction. You saw this in your, in your past classes. They gave you a transaction of sale, but where the person who was intending to sell couldn't sell land, why? The land was registered in the names of a minor. Remember, it is a legal restriction that you sell what belongs to you. That person couldn't sell. So that what we're supposed to do, solve the problem and enter into the transaction. The same thing that is going to apply here. We'll give you land, which land cannot be leased, and they want you to create a lease. So what does that mean? You can't enter into a lease transaction. Why? There is a legal restriction. First, sort of the restriction, then you enter into the transaction. Okay? So if it is not at that stage, they'll give you facts when they are at the second stage. The second stage is known as performance. How do we perform? Okay? As per uh, the transaction that you have, it is a lease transaction. In a lease transaction, it is between a lesser and how does the lesser perform and how does the perform? Possession. What happens? Possession and exclusive. Okay. Then the lease. How does the lease perform? By by one. It is general by ensuring that you follow the terms and conditions in the lease. So if you don't follow the terms and conditions in the lease, that means what is the remedy? Then we go to the last part, which is known as enforcement. Okay. Then we look at how do you enforce. If you are in breach of the terms and conditions in a lease transaction, you have failed to pay rent. What shall we do? We shall say, let us do a failure. Okay. If it is you, the lease who has said, I can't get money anytime. This transaction can't work out. What do you do? You can say, let me surrender. Okay. So it will be a case to case basis. So we are going to look at the different laws that create all of this. Then after we look at our workshop. Okay. You see, unlike other course units, they have not today given you the section they're supposed to read. You realize that that means whatever is fear is part of all of that they like. So they don't want to give you something. Direct. They want to make it hard so that you go ahead and eat. But remember, first term, it always came with sections. Now they have changed. They are back. Okay? Yes. Okay? Now they are back. Sections are there. <laughs> okay? Not all of them, but it's okay. Okay? For now, let's summon the constitution. Okay, so the first we are going to look at these sections random, but after then we shall be able to let them to the workshop. Okay, let's start with article 26. Okay, we are listing the laws. Yeah, right. Okay. We shall start with Article 20, 26. Article 26 says that every person has the right to own property. Okay. Every person has the right to own property individually or in association with others. Okay. Then close to says that no person shall be deprived of his or her property or interest therein without compensation. That is the first starting law you read in land. Okay? But, okay? But you can just 
We just paraphrase it, okay? No person shall be deprived of his or her property without prior adequate compensation. That's the starting point, okay? Shall be deprived of his or her property without prior adequate compensation, okay? Then let's go to article 237, okay? Land belongs to the citizens of Uganda, okay? Land belongs to the citizens of Uganda. Okay, 237. Land belongs to the citizens of Uganda. What does that imply? The government has no land. Government has no land. Okay, you know that. Okay, then when you go to Article 237, close, close to and three. Okay, they clearly state that. They clearly state that the government shall hold in trust of Ugandans. Shall hold in trust of Ugandans. Which land is that? Okay. Which land is that? Swamps, lakes, rivers, river banks. Okay. Hey. Okay, so now, first, after understanding that there is land, then look at what we call land management. Someone was asking for us, give us four institutions established under the law for effective land management. This person started with the Uganda land code. <laughs> no. The constitution. Okay. Okay. So now that management. This is a common question in all of us. Distinguish between Uganda Land Commission and District Land Board. Okay. Distinguish the land that is dealt with under Uganda Land Commission and other district land boards. That was my second question in all of us. Okay, so but that falls under the topic known as land management. So after understanding that this land is in Uganda, we have generally land is owned by the citizens of Uganda. But how do we manage land? So the, uh, the constitution has established institutions to do what we call land management. Okay, so the first institution is the Uganda Land Commission. Someone with the constitution, which article establishes the Uganda Land Commission? Yes. Yes. One article 238. Article 238 establishes the Uganda Land Commission. It clearly states that. There shall be established the Uganda Land Commission, which shall be a body corporate with capacity to so and to be so with. So now, when you get oral, they'll give you two titles. Okay? They open the castle. Look at those titles. They open. When the title is just here, one title will have Uganda Land Commission, another one will have the name of a private person. Another time you would have this plan for the tell you can distinguish the document for you. But when they, they are testing land management, when they want you to just explain to them that this this land belongs to this institution because of this, this land belongs to this because of this, this land, just like that. Okay, so which land? is dealt with, but we have another provision in the Land Act, which establishes the Uganda Land Commission. In section, section 
section 46 okay? section 46 of the land act of the land act okay then section 46 establishment of the uganda land commission then what are the duties of uganda land commission does the constitution provide yes does the constitution provide okay someone in the land act this pass for us section 49 of the land act gives functions of so when you go to oros those functions when you read them, they tell you the land that Uganda Land Commission does manage. Okay? Uh huh. Can you proceed? Uh huh. Can you amplify? Yes. Uh -huh. First, so ask yourself which land is acquired of the That's the first question. Okay? That question has been a problem in district land officers up to date. Distinguishing between public land and former public land. So ask yourself, okay? Which are they referring to public land? And what is public land? Uh -huh. Because we have the law that vested some land in the government. Okay? Which land is under Article 237, Clause 2? That the government, they, uh, it's the law read first. The government of Uganda shall hold in trust. So, what does that mean? That land is vested in the government of Uganda. So that, that land should be managed by the Uganda Land Commission. Okay? So when you read that article, all the categories of land that are mentioned they are in, they are first vested in Uganda Land Commission. That's the first. So what? how do you call that land? Is it public land? That is the public land. Okay? Uh -huh. Another one? Where are people hold and manage any land acquired by the government abroad, except that the commission may delegate management to land land. Slide is started, okay? All embassies are under Uganda Land Commission. Okay? For example, we have Uganda House. Okay? What have you done now? See, the UK. The UK is under Uganda Land Commission. Okay, that one is independent. Okay. What about 7th Street? Is it a private property of the government? It's in Netherlands. The 7th Street. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Okay. We leave that. So, so you just go looking that land that is owned by the government. Yes, that's another one. Uh -huh. uh -huh. that's, a, that's when they give you a certificate of title with Uganda Land Commission. Why? They have a duty to procure titles for that land. Okay? Mm -hmm. such other countries as they be prescribed by or under this act or any other uh -huh. they say perform such any other act when you underline it it's perform such any other act those guys are owners okay they deal with what you call management that's why if you want to use a certain piece of land under management of uganda land commission what do you do you apply that's so all leases granted by Uganda Land Commission, they come from that provision. 
okay? Because they have the mandate to utilize that land to perform any other. So that's how we come to get leases granted by Uganda land because of that law, okay? So we together now. Then after the Uganda Land Commission, which other entities do we have? Yes, sir. <laughs> that land, we, we have to see other entities. Okay. We have the, when you look at that union, okay? Union is a body of faith which has, so, okay? It has capacity to acquire land, but also in government. We shall get there. Okay. We go on. We have another entity. It's called the District Land Board, which article in the Constitution says the District Land Board 240 establishes. Two hundred forty establishes the district land board. Okay, then when you get to the land act, okay, when you get to the land act, it is section. Ah, uh, so let's get there. Okay, in the land act. Okay. Establishment of the District Land Board, Section 5.6 of the Land Act, okay? Okay? So, every district should have a district land, Mine. So when you're reading the function, they will indirectly they are telling you the type of land that is okay. Let's look at section 59 so that we understand the type of land that is dealt with by the district land board. The first land they mentioned there is land that is not owned by any person. What you did away? Land that is not owned. A swamp is owned by the, gov the government. It holds in trust. Okay? So let me give you an example. I don't know the truthfulness of this, but I heard of it. The late Sebagal, okay, had bought a lot of land in different places. Rumor has it that he had a farm around Nakasongora Road, like four of them 
but two of them they are around 500 acres but she had never disclosed to anyone and he had everything on him so that he could leave Kampala when he wanted to rest and he goes to that place but it was his sacred place so upon his demise no one knew about that land so who became the owner after his death you get it no one is going to play with this land it's we have people who are, who have cartographers here they know such land they keep quiet you see someone running with a big file so that's how the district becomes owners of land which is not owned by so upon death and this land is not claimed by anyone for a particular period of time the district has the mandate to take over and it gets registered on that land because it is not owned by anyone okay then another category of land yes yeah under the functions it's where we get that uh-huh let's read you read the function explain yes uh -huh. so now from you see it says own and allocate when you underline the word allocate that's where this is granted by the district plan board because we have also leases granted by the district plan board okay mm -hmm. we'll proceed okay to facilitate registration and transfer you have you read of transferring from customary to freehold from freehold to which entity does that that district land land board you remember where we get a customer certificate of title from the district land board okay and when you're converting to freehold you get a report from the district land board that is it and how we go on uh huh. Uh -huh. Now you see that that has created problems in practice. That statement. Why? We have uh, the 1970 what land Is it 1972? Okay, the land decree, which made all land public land. And by part of that decree, there was creation of a controlling authority. All land was vested in the controlling authority. So any person who wanted to utilize land was supposed to be given a lease from the controlling authority. So upon demise of that government, okay, that is uh, about a two. Okay, Obote too didn't revive the land laws. He first left those decrees to operate. So then after the downfall of that government and got the new government, the NRM government, okay, they changed the constitution back that land belongs to the citizens of Uganda. So every person in that particular district who was given land by the controlling authority, that so that land, the district land, board. so now the child is currently Uganda Land Commission. Now this is single authority. Yeah. So when they give you a title, no party they hear. Okay, when that lease was granted. That's when you know that it is a former If it is during a mini's regime, it is a former controlling authority. So that land goes to the district land boards, the land they're referring to. But it is in line. I'm telling you. 
it also gave me a hard time. Okay. When just because there were two plots, just the adjacent plot like this, it was of Uganda Land Commission, and this one was off. Just the boundary, the fence. This is district land board. This is Uganda Land Commission. Just the fence like this. But digging deep to understand was another big challenge. Up to now, we are still in that section for three years now. Okay. <laughs> you bring, you bring. It went on. Okay. Until even judges have issues with that, those things. So, from a public land, public land, controlling authority, from a controlling authority. You go to Ginger, you will see. That's where that confusion emanates from. Okay. Then, uh -huh, any other? Mm -hmm. That's why you have what we call the district land officer and his or her cabinet from that function. Okay. okay. To carry out surveys, mapping for the entire district. Okay, so when you get that was my question in Oros, from it was from Baninya, the great. Okay, she's a sweet person. Okay, so if you happen to have an opportunity and she's teaching you, just pay attention. I'm telling you. Okay, Council Baninya Sarah, the great. That's why me I call her the great. She's a great teacher. Okay, though she's tough, eh? mm. but she's good. Okay, then. With the exception of those two institutions that are under the Constitution and the Land Act, we have other institutions that are established by an act of parliament. But their existence is for proper management of land. This includes, but not limited to, NEMA. Okay? I'm sure you have it on your act. One of the laws you're supposed to read. That's the why. Remember, Article 237, that land the government owns. So the government places that land in a different entities for proper management. So that's why we have NEMA, the National Environmental Management Authority. Okay? So you ask yourself, which land is managed by NEMA? Okay. Which land is managed by NEMA? Okay. We have wetlands. Okay. You just read the NEMA Act, everything is there. It's the same one of the simplest acts. That's why we are not going to dwell on it. Okay. We have wetlands. We have river banks. Yes, we have wetlands. Lands, land that is managed by NEMA. So our third entity in land management is known as NEMA. So we are listing land that is dealt with under NEMA. So we said we have wetlands, we have river banks, we have lake shores. What else? We have uh, swamps. Okay, a swamp is different from a wetland. Okay, you go to the NEMA Act, everything is defined. <laughs> everything is defined. Okay, that is a sweet area, that's money. Okay, so now, if not NEMA, which other institution? The National Forestry Authority, NFA. Okay, NFA. So ask yourself which land is managed and controlled by? NFA, National Forestry Authority, is established under the NFA Act. Okay. It is also the so which land is managed by NFA? Yes, reserves. Yes, wetland nature 
or artificial once it is reserved and gazetted okay until it is degazetted but if it is still gazetted it is under nfa so if you want to utilize land which is Yes, Council Emma. Okay. Okay, we go on. So, if you want to utilize land under NFA, okay, or under NEMA, you apply for a license from those authorities, okay? That is going to be that term work basically, okay? And it is, it is a good one, okay? That's okay. Sorry. Okay? Go on. Then, if not those entities, we have another entity known as Uganda Roads Authority. Okay? So, huh? You, yes, UNRWA. It's established under which act? The UNRWA Act. Now let me tell you, just that things changed, but uh, UNRWA was created some time back during the administration, okay? But imagine all load reserves, they had titles. All, they had titles, and each load reserve had a house. Had a house. 90% of the police station you see, they are occupying that land. Yes. And I don't know where this is renting. But over to who? Sometimes I want. I've ever gone to Nagara. Eh? You see Nagara, my police station. Okay? Just even after it, there is some Ramshakotka house. Have ever seen for that type? It was in Uganda Roads Authority. But I don't know it was transferred by it was established to manage road for proper management. So even currently, when you look at the Compulsory Land Acquisition Act, okay, place down that procedure. So you ask yourself, after compensating you, they tell you bring your title, we mutate off, okay? Where does that title go that they have mutated off? It is under Junra, okay? So that entity, is also basically established for proper management of land. So they only manage land under road reserves. Okay. Are we together? Okay. ETC, ETC. Okay. Now, after you're looking at management, you've seen all those entities, but the general is land the citizens of Uganda. Okay. So now we want to understand. Okay. All of these entities that we have mentioned, they work for and on behalf of Ugandans. Okay. So the question is, how do they acquire land? Okay. So that takes us to our first transaction known as compulsory land acquisition. Yes, it's not under our government. We have two types of government central government and yes, they just work for Kabak. Go on, Buganda and the board. No, actually, even if uh, Kakungul has a land board. Kakungulu has a land board. Okay. Uh, Chisingi is a Kalias Chisingi. 
final antibody a bomb. Okay? All people who are on their land, you go, they process the right how it means final offices out. So, okay. <laughs> okay? Yes, thanks. Yes. Okay. So they could you just create your own. It's a set of management for easy management. Okay. Yes. You ask those those people who come from bad. The way they are looking for Kakungu. The way they are looking for Chisingi. Because all of their land is in two names. Chisingi and Kakungu. So all of them are squatters. <laughs> <laughs> the entire bag. Okay. So let's proceed. Okay. Let's get back. So now we've seen these entities, but all of these entities are government entities. Okay. So as a result of that, we have two ways how these entities acquire land. Okay. One is by acquisition or where it is vested into that goes by virtue of the door, okay? So we are going to start with acquisition. So we want to see how do these entities acquire land. So this means all government entities that are established by an act of parliament have capacity to acquire land, including the law development center, okay? I read a case about this land. On Compass Island position. Okay? It may be on your new reading list. <laughs> okay? That that downer part took long to be developed because of that case. Okay? So let's get back on board. So now the topic we are looking at is Compass Island acquisition. Okay? So first things first. When you are looking at compulsory land acquisition, which laws are you supposed to look at? Okay. So the first laws we're supposed to look at, we've already mentioned them. That is for 26. It is the starting point. Article 26. Okay. Then after Article 26, we go to the Land Acquisition Act. But just pray, just thank God, okay? That one of the greatest pillars, the ministry is being shaped somehow, somewhere, but shall propose for amendment of the Land Act and that act. That is none other than Pasis Namugans. Okay, that act chances are high, even before you sit your exams. They may amend the land act and the and the land acquisition act. Just put it in prayers, because once they amend them, they are going to affect the entire course unit. So that means you have to amend your work before you sit the exam. Ask your predecessors. The companies act, partnership act. Sale of goods, all those acts were made that once two weeks to exams. You so far here. Okay. So let's go on. Okay. So let's go to the land acquisition act. Land acquisition. So when you read the land acquisition act together with the constitution, we have to be able to appreciate what we call conditions for compulsory land acquisition to take place. So before any entity compulsorily acquires, the following conditions take place. Okay? One, the acquisition should be for public use. The acquisition should be for public use. So now you ask yourself, what amounts to public use? Okay. 
We have a case that defines public, public use, okay? I'm, I'm, so, I'm trying to see if it is here. Okay, it is not it is not on the list yet. But if I come across it, I'll forward it. But uh, when you read case law, they say that uh, what amounts to public use that it should be benefiting the entire society, but not a particular sect of people. Okay? That it should be benefiting the entire society, but not a particular sect of people. Okay? You may be in need of establishing your personal clinic. Okay? A private clinic. Okay, I'm using this example for academic purposes. Okay, I'm not a politician and I'm not against any political win. Okay, I automatically subscribe to the ruling government. Okay, we had members, let's get back. Okay, we had a hospital that was supposed to be established where in Iruhoa. Okay. But if you remember very well, those guys went through compulsory land acquisition. Then after even acquiring land compulsory in the name of public interest, they went ahead and made a requisition of a supplementary budget. Again, the name of public. So when you recall that saga, they had to dig deep in what amounts to public interest at the end of the day it was established that this black something something okay i don't know someone was referring to that person a given time in the coffee deal recent some funny mp okay so that matter okay when okay she was presented before the parliamentary committee it was established that it was her personal interest. It was not going to benefit the entire public. So by virtue of that, that's why the project was not a success, okay? These people saying that Simania, it was for the government, something, something, uh, uh, okay? So it was not in the public interest. So what amounts to public interest? It should be going to benefit the entire for example, when you look at the following entities, they have acquired land, but in public interest. The first entity is National Water and Sewage Corporation. Okay? When you look at the National Water and Sewage Corporations Act, they are allowed to enter and access your land for public use. Okay? Remember, they have been dealing with the pipeline from Katosi, okay, coming to Kampala, that purified water. So where that pipeline is passing is for the public interest, okay? Then we have another company that is typical, that is Umeme, okay? They are seizing their operations on the 25th of March this year. 
Okay? The government, what has a plan? That is the government. Okay? We have UTC. It's a, it's a government company. Okay? Then, another company, we have the Law Development Center. It acquired this land for public use. Okay? Okay, this is a government entity. Okay, the law development center was not law development center. I've ever heard of trade unions. Like a school of trade unions established by one of the great suburban people. Okay, Musas. So this was the first trade union school in Africa. So, in Tanzania, when these guys went, they had to go to the other guys. Very well, yes, sir. Yeah, guys very good. So, when they go to the one in our position, so the white one, they are done. So after some time, it was turned into the law development center. This we are doing this. This we are doing this. So what happened then? So with what government agency? But in the condition that it was, it is not and the second condition, it is on prior and adequate compensation. Prior and adequate compensation that is under Article Twenty Six. Okay, no person shall be compensated of his or her interest without prior. And adequate compensation. So now, when you read the land amendment bill, one of the grounds, okay, Honorable Pastor Namuganza wanted to amend that issue of prior compensation on grounds that they delay government projects. So for what she was saying, let us first acquire, then we compensate, okay. Because it is since it is in the public interest, leave the public to go on, okay, and then we shall cater for you later. Okay, we don't know. Okay, we don't know. Okay, so let's get back. Let's get back. Okay, so when those two conditions, but the question for determination has always been papers. That the issue of compensation should be revised, that people are given insufficient in the name of adequate. Because the law says adequate, but not sufficient. So that this is, but you know what is sufficient for you. Okay? That's why when you look at the process. This guy is the, the one is to do valuation. You don't do valuation. And once they bring the valuation report, if you agree with it, they pay. If you don't agree, they deposit money where in court and they proceed. Ask those guys of the PG Express. They said that their ancestors wanted 500 million shillings. Then the government valuer made a valuation of 300. So now, 300 million. Then when they went to court, court found that what is, what is adequate to them was 4 million. It was deposited in court and, and up to now. The ancestors know you. But they are saying. <laughs> Let's go on. Let's go on, OK? Let's go on, okay? So, let's look at the process, okay? Let's come back. Let's look at the process of compulsory 
land acquisition. Okay, process the step by step process of compulsory land acquisition. Okay, okay, the steps. Okay, for compulsory land acquisition. Okay. Mm. Okay, so when are we there to the act? Okay, the Land Acquisition Act. Okay, now the first step is to enter land okay the first step is under section two okay to enter land why to take samples okay okay why would i supply to zamas get a okay the first step is enter land okay to take samples, okay? Section two of the Land Acquisition Act, it says, in order to ascertain the suitability of any land for public purpose, any person authorized by the minister may enter upon that land, survey the land, dig into the subsoil and remove samples, okay? So whatever project you're going to make, we first make samples, okay? I don't know. Then after that, okay? After that, after that, the next, when we take the samples, okay? And we find out that this land is suitable for the project we want, then we shall go to the next step we do, declaration. We declare that the land is needed for public use. Okay, that is under section three. That's under section three. Yes. Okay. Declaration that the land is needed for public use. Okay. Then after the declaration. Then it is the, the, the third step is marking of the portion needed. You see those guys of Unra, they come, they put stars on your house. They are marking. Okay. They first make a survey, then after survey, they they declare one we're gonna call a sheet, Then after the following day, they come with. They are white markers. They screw your house with that X. They put arrows, okay? Showing that you have to extend these meters the other side on your, on your land that you bought this food, okay? Then after these guys have marked, that means whoever they mark is an indication that this land is needed. So then after that, the next step is issuance and notice. Okay. Yes? That is section four okay section four then another step is issuance a notice issuance of a notice to all parties with interest on that land okay so that we issue a notice we call so those guys in impeach i don't know how their ancestors received the notice eh? to all parties with interest on that land okay that is under section five. Okay. Then, once after issuing that notice, we shall convene a meeting. Okay. The next step is convening a meeting. But what is the essence of this meeting? The essence of the meeting is one to declare all the properties you have. So you declare the property, the interest, okay. Okay. 
That's the essence of a title. So you continue buying the Vivanda. First you shall come, buy the title, you stay with your Chibanda. We keep quiet somewhere. Okay? I have a colleague who went and bought guys in GT. The guys had the title for over 70 years. So the land is fully occupied, but the guy was planning for what we call the Gaza Express. So they are going to make it that junction in GT Trading Center. So the guy bought half of the trading center. He's waiting for compensation. He's still with your band. So he's going to share with you guys whether you like it or not. And we bought the guys cheap, we told them the land is fully occupied. So that means there is no business. All the business is there. He's not even going to deal with the Vivaldia people. He's just waiting for government. But it was at the moment. He bought 500 million. One acre. Imagine how much is he going to get. Only 500 million. <laughs> but it's going to earn over two billion from that compensation. Keep on no business. Hey, we go on, okay? <laughs> okay, so now, okay, so during that meeting, you declare the type of interest. Is it legal? Is it equitable? You declare what developments you have, okay? What development? So you with banana plantations, cassava, it is okay. We shall value yoka food. We give you two hundred k. You go and risk. Okay. Those with graveyards, since these guys are going to suffer irreparable damages. Okay. Their compensation is different. Okay. Then those with residential houses. Okay. You know what we mean by residential, not houses. Okay, they are different. So during that meeting, we do that declaration. Okay, then after the declaration, the next step is valuation. Valuation. Now to make matters worse, in evaluation, you the owner of land, you don't, you don't even look there. You just wait for the hours. So the, the government just goes aside, they do the valuation and keep quiet. Okay. Then after the valuation, after the valuation, issuance of the notice. <laughs> issuance of a notice after valuation is where you follow this. Like that, okay? That's what we call. So they notify you how much you you get, okay? But that notice sometimes it is added, it is put at the notice board. Yeah? The different notice boards where this land is and in the gazette, in the gazette, and then also in the newspaper of wide circulation, okay? Why? Now. You see, this world is funny. Once they give, they, they go and they give that award, because after that, okay, section six, it says, in, that award, that's the valuation. So you have to call the award. So if you are not okay with the award, you have a right to complain, okay? You have a right to complain, okay? You have the right to complain. That is what we call inquiry. What Okay, that's what we call an inquiry in the award. So you complain. Okay, where do you complain? Do you have a tribunal? Okay, so that, that tribunal was swapped for. You complain to the to the AG. Okay, but imagine the funniest thing with once you lodge a complaint, they'll give the rest as the inquiry is taking place. Okay, you wait until it is done. So they maintain the status quo. You've seen roads, okay, where they walk upon the road, they jump this place, they walk upon this one. That means this person here 
is still in the inquiry process. So they then to work upon that place until the inquiry process is done and they don't give even a single coin. That's the worst part of it. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Yes, that's it. When you read section six, it says that where a notice is published under section five in respect of any land, the assessment officer shall on a day specified in the notice proceed to hold an inquiry into claims and objections. So the section has not given us the specified time. So it is upon the land officer to give you that on this day, come, we are in a you do what? You come. Okay. So once you come, we shall give you the rest money. Go to Kulekao. The reason why BD Express has not yet commenced actual work because of that process. I myself, I have four cases in BD on that land over that of that express. So it can't proceed until those guys have determined those cases. Okay, so that's why the process has delayed. Because of this, once you make an inquiry, you shall work at other places, you leave your place out until you sort yourself. Okay? Because you see what they do currently, the government, okay? What they are doing, uh, they tell people, for example, these uh, access roads in Kampala, they say, if you guys are willing to give us free land, we can work on you. Okay? Why? They don't want compensation. Okay? Me, I was a victim. Me, I signed on behalf of my parents. Okay? Most of the ring roads in Kambara do compensation. You then free of charge. If you don't want development, it's Gazaka for to come, but it's free. That's why I have some roads in Kampala which are not developed because of that reason they tell you that talk to your people if they agree we shall work on them without compensation okay you see this chigoa ring road it has a particular space that is not worked on that means they refused to give his land a free of charge until now yes they died they died. They died and the kids sold that land. And actually, they knocked the house down two months back after selling. So the kids cracked the deal because the guy told them to buy. This place has to be worked on. So they agreed. They worked on and the guy bought the plot. That's how they left Kampala. <laughs> so either agree. Me, I signed on full and very road. I gave them a few meters and they walked on it. Yeah, that was the way to go. Okay. So, yeah. So now, after, then after that, the next step will be payment. Okay. The next step will be compensation, payment of compensation. Yes. Okay. After the notice, if inquiries are made, okay, under section six. So during that process of inquiries, those who agree that okay, the money is okay, but we we shall pay them to a gym there and then. Those who still have issues, wait until your issues are complete. Okay. Then after that payment of compensation, then we shall take possession. Okay. Taking possession under section seven. Okay. So now, right when I go past this Namugans, or oh, she wants the last step to be the first step. <laughs> you see the trick? She wants the last step to be the first. We take possession, the rest shall, shall follow the event. 
Okay? So, that is Uganda. So now, any question? Okay. Now, after you've understood how these entities acquire land, we say the second mode how these entities acquire land is by vesting this land into them. So we have laws that have vested land into government entities. And these entities are basically two. That is Uganda Land Commission and the District Land Board. Okay? We saw the land that is under the management of those entities. But some of the ways through which these governments, okay? Praise God. Yeah. Okay? So, uh, as I was saying that uh, Uganda Land Commission, okay, and the District Land Board, okay, by virtue of the laws we've read, the law has vested certain land into their possession. But when you look at that law, that law allows these entities to manage land by doing any such act as the law may prescribe. So one of the ways of management is leasing and licensing. So which topic should we start with? Ah, so let's go to leasing. Okay. So we are going to lease it now. Okay. We've said, it's not where we started from. We say, we say, okay, we listed the entities, okay, that the government established for land management. And we say, there are two ways through which these entities acquire land. One is by compulsory land acquisition, which we've seen. Then the second one is by virtue of the law, where the law vests land in a particular entity. So when you look at the Constitution and the Land Act, they established Uganda Land Commission and the District Land Board. And under their functions, there is a certain category of land that was vested in these two entities. And the law is these entities can manage that land in any way they deem fit. So some of the ways these two entities can manage that land is by leasing or licensing. So that takes us to our next topic known as leases. Are we together? Okay. So now... Go on. Okay. So first things first, what is a lease? Okay. So let's do like this. Eh? Let's list down the questions we are going to deal with. We also first go for prayers. We tell that something is not happening, right? right. We deal with that. Okay. Yes. Just list these questions. Okay. What is a lease? What is a lease? Okay. Then to, then to, from what land do we create a lease? From what land do we create a lease? Not all land you can create a lease, okay? Then three, what are the different types? So we said our first question is, what is a lease? The next question is, from what land do we create a lease? Then the third question is, what are the different types of leases? Then the next question is, how do we create a lease? How do we create a lease? Under how do we create, we shall look at by operation of law, under how. By, by deed, by deed. Okay. 
Then after that, we shall look at what we call conditions in a lease agreement. Okay. Then yeah, under that, we shall look at what condition to get it. agreement. What conditions? Maybe in years, remedies in what are available in circumstances of the breach of the when we are going to cook this. Now, Kulukuru, I'm not going to get in the of the conditions in the list argument. After covering those questions, everything will be said to go. The last question is, what remedies are available in circumstances of breach? Okay. So, allow me to pause this session. We first talk to God. We have to report to him that criminal possession. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. So, by the time we broke off for prayers, okay, by the time we broke off for prayers, we were at least a number of questions that we need to answer. The first one was, what is a lease? So let's get so before we understand what is a lease, ask yourself which laws govern leases? Which laws govern leases? Which laws govern leases? Okay. One, we have the contracts act, the land act. Laws that govern leases, we have the Land Act, Contracts Act, okay. laws that govern leases, okay. laws that govern leases, we have the Contracts Act, the Land Act, the RGA. So, what is a lease? That's the question before us. What is a lease? Do you have any law that defines a lease? Yes? Yes? Do you have any law that defines a lease? Yes? Does the constitution define? So, let's go to the RRTA. Let's go to the RRTA. Someone in the RRTA. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, when you look at the business section, does it give you the definition? There's none. Okay, there's none. Okay. So let's go to section 101 of the RRTA. Section 101. So 90% of the questions we have are answered by that one section. Okay. Section 101 of the RRTA. One zero one of the RRTA. It says leases. Okay. Uh huh. So from that, we're going to get the definition of a lease. Okay. We shall get who can create a lease of from what land. Okay, and so forth. 
Let's read. Hmm? The proprietor of any freehold of my land under the operation of this act may. Now, first stop there. Before we answer the first question, what has that phrase answered? Who can? So only a proprietor. Who is a proprietor? A person who is on the land title. Okay? So it has answered who can create a lease. So once they give you facts, when someone has no lease, has no, is not a proprietor, that person can create a lease. How do we see that someone is the proprietor? That person should appear on the certificate of, then uh -huh. from that very statement she has read, it has also answered from what land? Okay, from what land? Freehold and mile. Okay, so from those two, freehold and government entities, what type of tenure do they own? Freehold. So that means Uganda Land Commission and the District Land Board, they issue out leases from freehold. Then the mile with the individuals, okay, the Uganda. Okay, with mile, we can also create these days. Okay, so people from Karamanga who have that type of tenure, okay, the community tenure system, they can't create these days unless, okay, they convert to. So now they'll give you an exam when the title is in, when the land are given you. Is customary, they tell the guy what a lease. Okay, now the answer is simple convert customary to free. Or why this is what we call a legal restriction. So, the legal restriction in a lease transaction is a lease is only created from mile or free hold. So, when they give you facts. And they indicate that this land is customary land. And the person, the only option you see is a lease. So that means behind that question of a lease, there is conversion from customary to free. Exactly. Okay. I will get so council. Let's proceed with that. We are still on the same one provision. Uh-huh. Subject to any law. Mm -hmm. Agreement for the time being in force. Uh -huh. we first stop there. Okay. Subject to any law or agreement. I'll explain that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, lease that land for any term exceeding three years mm -hmm. by signing a lease for it in the form in the in, in the eighth schedule. Uh -huh. What does that mean? The lease, the deed you're going to draft. Is somewhere in that article. Okay. So the thesis of a lease deed is in that act behind. Okay. How do you get? So then that question that what you just read has also answered how do we create a lease? Not so. So we create a lease by signing a deed or by operational because it says. As the law may prescribe or by signing a deed. So we have two ways. Okay. That's why I said it is governed by the contracts act because it is a contract. Okay. That's why we say that a lease is governed by the contract act. Why? The deed you are signing is between two parties. Okay. A lesser and. Ah. Uh -huh. Now, we looked at, do you have any section that talks about operation of law? What do you understand by operation of law? Yes? How do you create a lease by operation of law? Hmm? Yes? Cancel Vincent. What is in Article 236 Clause 1? Yes? Mm. 
What is in that article? Land belongs to the citizens of then under Article 37, Clause 4, which people are supposed to get visas than citizens. So what happens if you lose citizenship? I still learn. So your land automatically converts into because by operation of law, non-citizens don't own. So once you lose citizenship, you get it. Huh? We've said, we've looked at operation, we've looked at by deed or by agreement. That one, we know it, okay? The act has talked about it. And we've said, we have another way of creating a list is by operational law. So we are trying to ask ourselves, how does the law bring it into play, okay? Because something which is by operation of law, it is expressly stated in the law, okay? So now we've said, the general is land belongs to the citizens of, so that means if you are not a citizen of Uganda, you only acquire, okay? So by virtue of that article, once you lose citizenship, automatically, okay? You, you no longer a citizen. So automatically, your land turns into a lease of 99 years. You don't even ask it, <coughs> okay? You just come, you pick your lease agreement peacefully. Peacefully. So for you, they may give you back when someone was convicted of prison. Remember once you were convicted of prison, you lose citizenship. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't worry, they will see you. <laughs> okay. If not, they will give you facts of irony. Over the case, Kagambe, Danze, whatever, if Rema doesn't come back, I will denounce Uganda, you denounce. Okay. Once you lose citizenship by denouncing, okay, you've lost citizenship. So automatically, you become a non citizen. So your land, even without paying taxes, automatically converts into a lease granted by which authority? Uganda land for <laughs> You get it. So your land becomes public land automatically. You are the post government. So that's it. The government said it. So that means the government has acquired your, your land. So it goes to Uganda land for Yes? <laughs> Is it registered in your name for the kids? Okay. They can inherit the lease. Yes. <laughs> yes, so you can take on the lease. 99 years. See past that. That's what we call operation of law. The law says land belongs to the of the bank. So if you're not a citizen, okay, let's go to section 40 of the land act okay so now i want you to distinguish you have issues you see leases of 45 years five years 99 years okay so let's go to section 40 of the land act mm -hmm. so take us to section 40 section 40 subsection one mm -hmm. three acquisition of land by Non citizens, uh huh. Subject to article 2, article 7, 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 article Non citizens only acquire a lease not exceeding 99. So now we want to see. Ask you the law. So now, Council, proceed. Uh huh. Uh, what is section 
Section 40, subsection 2. That is for five years or more acquired by the non citizen shall be registered in accordance with the registration. Ah, ah. So now we had on our questions, we had what to call types of leases. So the first type of a lease is known as which lease is that? Anything that is registered. How do you call it? Yes, it is a legal lease. It is a registered lease. So what does that mean? A non-citizen, you don't exceed you don't go below five years whether you like it or not okay That's okay. Okay, so we've said that um, that implies that a non citizen you get five up to 99. So if it is below five, money. okay, so ask yourself who can acquire below five? You get it, yes. We it, the thing is also there, okay. A non citizen, why? Because we want your list, your list to be registered. That's why you are restricted from five and above. Okay? You don't go below that. Why? Below five years, they don't register that list. So it is it is left for citizens. Okay? You get it. So that's the other type of list which we don't register. Okay. Okay, the three years we don't just below five, we don't just okay. That's why all leases they first give you the initial time of five years if you've been so keen, okay, with those titles. Five years with certain conditions. Once the five years expire, it is subject for renewal. Then they give you 99, 45. 49 but they the law doesn't give you or there is no lease where they give you automatically 99 no it doesn't operate why some investors were paid it. so we first test you we give you five years you pay the premium we give you terms and conditions that by the end of the five years you should have constructed the substantial structure what could be our mother Okay, so as a result of that, we don't continue. Once the five years expire, we terminate. Okay, we are together. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They that for non citizens. Okay, non citizens. Okay, uh -huh. let's go on. Okay, so what does that mean? The, it is between 5 and 99. Okay, between 5 and 99. Okay, uh huh. Let's go on. Okay. Five. For the, for the avoidance of doubt, yes. Any non citizen 
food immediately before they come in the court of, of the constitution health plan as we on compassion with the meaning of the land point from decree of 1975 shall be to Okay, what does that mean? Remember the, the law reform decree of 1975. Okay, land was the, the, the Latin Amendment Act. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, she has it. Read the amendment. Read five. That is okay. Is that an amendment, class? Yes, yeah, that amendment. Okay, then read. Uh -huh. six. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is by operation of once you lose citizenship. Ah. Forget our land. So you become a web Nigerian. And the ending part of the automatically and without any other legal requirements than this last section be converted to a piece for a period of 99 years. What does that mean? You don't even, without any condition, you don't go if first man you pay, you pay the premium automatically, they and then. It converts into a lease. They don't want you to go to the court, never have a PM. You've not gone through the bureaucracy of doing valuation, what and what, automatically. Very simple. Okay? So, why don't you receive this? Okay? Uh -huh. So, now, in your workshop, I saw it. You should be able to tell who is a nun, a nun citizen. In your final exam, I'm pretty sure that number is not going to miss of a nun citizen buying that. Okay? It will either be a lease or a real sale, but it should have a nun citizen. How? They will give you a company. So you should be able to tell. That this company is a citizen company, this is a non citizen. You have it even in your workshop, imagine. It is there, because now I saw it. Okay? Incorporation of a non citizen company. Does it become a Ghanaian company? Oh, we don't. Have. Okay? That's a proceed. Uh -huh. For the Okay, that one, those ones we know very well. Okay. This in the case of a corporate body, corporate body in which the controlling interest lies with the In case of body where shares are not applicable, where the body's decision making lies within that citizen. Okay. The company in which the shares are held. Okay, so that those ones you can tell we did cap and low. But you get any explanation. Okay, so now when you are given facts, first ascertain. Do I have a citizen or a non citizen? Before you make a decision, you can go for a list when the facts are calling the license. <laughs> Just a mere interpretation of is this person a citizen or a non citizen? Because a non citizen, you can't give them a license. Just tell them to go for a list. Then, citizens, let them get a license. Okay? We go on. Hmm? Yes. That one. 
that, that one is okay. Okay, so now, when you read all those provisions, haven't they answered the question that you have? Okay? So now, the question for determination is basically how we create a list and the terms and conditions of a list. Okay? So first things first. Let's go back again to section 101 of the RRTA. We read it in its entirety. Okay? So now we are going to look at how we create a list. Once you appreciate the house, because we are basically interested in the part of the agreement. By operation of law, we are okay, okay? But this part of the agreement, that's when you have to go and look at the terms and conditions. So we look at the conditions of this and what happens if you breach the conditions, okay? So let's go back to the RTA. We look at section 101 in the first place. So we are going to read it so that we get some the how it will send us to the schedule, not so. And you look at the argument. Let's go. Uh -huh. The proprietor of the three words, all my lands, under the operation of this act, may subject to any law or argument for the time being in force, lease that land or any. Term exceeding three years by signing a lease of it in the form of the exchange of this act. Okay. No lease, but no lease subject to a mortgage shall be valid or binding against the mortgage unless he or she has consented in writing the lease prior to it being registered. So now, <clears throat> from that provision, it has given you what we call another legal restriction okay you don't lease land which has a mortgage unless you have written consent from okay are we together why a mortgage is an encumbrance and an encumbrance bars any transaction on a land title so where i am the my owner I mortgage my land in Brenda Bank Uganda Limited. She registers a mortgage on that, on that title. And then Joy wants to lease this land. I can't go ahead and I lease Joy land without written consent from Brenda Bank. Once I go ahead and I transact with Joy, we enter into this agreement, okay? It is not binding on Brenda Bank. So she can come and enforce and sell it, and even they sell you as well, okay? Unless she has written consent, okay? If I get consent from the bank, I can release. Why? The bank will be aware that regardless of me enforcing my rights, there is a third party whose interest is supposed to be protected. So when, when they give you facts, the things you should first put across one, which type of land, then two, open the title behind, go to the encumbrance page. Does it have a mortgage or not? That's why they gave you titles, okay? Open behind, go to the encumbrance page. If it has a mortgage, advise your client to seek consent from that mortgage. Yeah. Okay, are you together? Okay, so now, after reading that, the presumption is our land is encumbrance free. It has no mortgage, and we are either having mile or three hold. So now we want to lease. But how? In the form of an argument. Can so open the eighth schedule of the act. Are you there? So let's go to the schedule. Those with the act, let's go to the schedule. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the schedule. Okay. Uh huh. Have you seen it? How does it read? Uh huh. So now, when you are basically looking at that, that's what we call a list deed. 
So whatever is contained therein, you should make sure, okay, that it is appreciated. Those are what we call terms and conditions. Okay, eighth schedule. Okay, eight. Okay, are we there? Uh huh. Yes, Councillor Joy. Take us through. The heading is to list by in So now, what does that mean? Remember, we said this is a contract. At the top of your argument, this is a public document. That's why we say the Republic of Uganda. A document with the word Republic of Uganda is a public document. Mark that. Okay. A document with the word the Republic of Uganda is a public document. But in Uganda, people draft a will. Never take out the Republic of Uganda. Is it a public document? Okay. Then we say that this is the contract between two people. Then you say in the matter of the contracts act. Okay. Then that regardless of it being a contract, ask yourself what I deal with land. You say in the matter of the land act. Okay. The land you are dealing with is it registered land? Which law governs registered land? In the matter of the registration of titles act now what are you doing then you bring that head in okay are we together okay <laughs> now we say the document we are dealing with is a public document that's why we shall say the republic of Uganda, okay? No, but before you start writing this big or this argument, the, that heading, you don't put the head, the law in the heading, which doesn't operate, okay? So we shall say the Republic of Uganda, which, which are, what are we dealing with, okay? So it is between how many people? So that is an argument between two, is governed by which law? You <coughs> say in the matter of the contract act. Then this contract is in relation of what? Then you say in the matter of the land act. Which land are you dealing with? Yes, that land. Which law? In the matter of the registration of titles act. Then what are you going to write? It is known as a lease agreement. Then you put that heading. Okay. Are you together? Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, I will get so now after making your heading, you come to that document. Okay, you come to that document. You start inserting what applies to the facts you have, the challenge you have. You have the thesis, but you don't know how.
So that means, okay, you lose. You are at the schedule. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, comrades, okay, it's like this. We are looking at ways of creating a list. We say they are two. The first one was by operation of the law, which we dealt with. Then the second one is by an agreement. And we said that this agreement is a lease deed. So we ask ourselves, which law provides for that deed? Upon reading section 101 of the RTA, it says that any proprietor of mile and freehold can lease land by signing a deed under which schedule? Then you go to the eighth schedule when you go to the eighth schedule we say we are giving now how to draft that agreement as an agreement drafted by a lawyer okay so we've said that agreement is a public document at the top we have to include the republic of uganda and we've said that that agreement is between two parties okay which means it is a contract that then we put in the matter of the contract act. The, the contract we are making is in regards to land. Then we put the land act. So the land we are dealing with is registered land. We put the RTA. Then after that, you say lease deed or lease agreement. Okay. Then you say this agreement is made this 24th day of this and this between you put the parties. Okay. I'm amending that because here they say I dash, you get it. I dash. So that, what, what, they, they say I, they're referring to who? The proprietor. So that's why me, instead of using that, I will say this deed is made this day between. I bring that one. I insert the name of the proprietor, Uganda Land Commission. Here in after referred to as the lesser. And when you proceed that I on reading, yeah, it creates another part known so who is the, the lessee. They say and then you put the person who is acquiring the lease. Okay. <laughs> then after that, you are going to give us the terms and conditions. Then you will say this uh, it is here by agreed as here under then you give us the conditions then you come to those conditions under that ask yourself according to the facts what conditions okay does my client want don't make a condition that is not in the facts okay as by your facts that require a deed they specified that the guys want to use the land for not so so the first condition okay is known as the user covenant the user covenant what are you going to use the land for that's a condition okay that's why when you look at the list uh the land titles for list they have that part of conditions that for residential purposes and the agriculture purposes only once you make anything outside that it is a breach of a condition so we cancel the title you get it okay so the first condition is the user covenant or the user clause what are you going to use the land for so your facts they will tell you that he wants residential wants agriculture wants commercial you okay hotel and management so you specify okay then another condition is you just read in the schedule. The conditions are there. Okay. Just go to the ninth schedule. Okay. Is it eight? Okay. Nine. Okay. The ninth schedule. Whatever is here. Okay. You see, it is come. It comes up here. Those are the convenient stock conditions. Okay. So for you read. Okay. Whatever condition that is here. Okay, you go to the ninth schedule. This, you see, these are the conditions. You get 
it. So when you say, for example, the first condition is the list will not transfer or sub. So it's a condition that the lease shall not sub, sub lease. So you include it. If that's what you guys have agreed. Remember, we have leases which allow a lease to also become a lesser. But if you don't want that, you include the condition one. Okay, then two, the lease will be <laughs> cultivative. Okay, what are you going to use it for? You come just like that. Okay, so we together. Okay, so the conditions you want, you just go there and look at them. So, and the best condition also is known as payment of premium. I can send you a Okay, payment of the premium. Okay, so when you look at that premium, it is supposed to be paid. Okay, so you should well, you should get time. You read the analysis schedule. You read all those conditions. When you come back and reading your facts, you will see they have given you the condition to insert. But the challenge is, you get a lease agreement, you copy and paste. When the conditions in that lease don't conform to your workshop, take time, don't rush. Read the facts, come to the law, and you see what operates. The facts tell you the conditions they want, okay? Don't rush, okay? So now, the presumption is we have entered into this agreement. Okay, we've signed the lease. Okay, it is of whatever years, provided they are between five and ninety-nine. Okay, so now ask yourself because the law says it is mandatory to register. So then that takes us to what we call registration of a lease. How do you register lease? Registration of a lease. Okay. Now, the first challenge is it depends. It depends. Okay. If I have a title of eight acres and I'm leasing only two acres, okay, and I'm leasing only two acres. How do I do it? Okay. You first survey and mutate off. You separate those titles. Okay. That's why they have given you new workshop. They want you to, they want to test whether you understood what to call registration of land. Okay. You get it. So the process, it depends on the size of land you are leasing. If the title I have is of eight acres and I am intending to lease only two acres. Okay, the process will be different from where the title I have is of two acres and I am leasing two, two acres. Okay, so it will be diff a different story. But as per your workshop, we shall take the one I have mentioned first. Okay, so the first one is to carry out a survey. Okay, to carry out a survey. You first survey this land, you open the boundaries. Okay. Then after, then after you mutate off, mutate off the portion to be leased. Okay, if it is eight acres, mutate off the two acres. So that means, we are going to now having two, two titles, okay? Are we together? Yeah. So now, this title is in the names of the, less, the lesser, okay? But we, we don't transfer this title, no, okay? You get a copy of that title, okay? You write an application and attach the lease agreement, okay? Write an application, attach a copy of the title, okay? 
attach a copy of the title and a copy of the lease agreement. Write an application, okay? Mm -hmm. On the application, attach a copy of the land title and then a copy of the lease agreement, okay? Then after that, payment of stamp duty or payment of the necessary fees. Then after you load your application to the communist to the commissioner land registration <laughs> of that particular end result. Load your application to the commissioner land registration of that particular end result. Commissioner land registration. Yes. Let's assume PG, Bakiso, Ginger, whatever the case may be. Okay. You load your application to that office. Okay. Okay. It's the register of titles for and on behalf of the commission. Okay. Then, then after that, then your list will be registered. But how do you tell that it is registered? It will reflect on the land title as an encumbrance. Then, okay. Then we say the list will be registered and it will reflect on the title as an encumbrance. Okay. As an encumbrance. Okay. Then after creation of a lease called certificate of title. So they don't create a title before it is registered as an encumbrance. Okay. We've said after payment of the necessary fees, you load your application to the registrar of a particular Amazon. Okay. Then after you've lodged the registrar, the registrar so commission. It's like saying the DPP and the state. Okay. I will explain. Ministry zonal office. Okay. So are we together? So okay so now we've said after the registration okay the list will appear as an encumbrance on the encumbrance page okay so now then after we shall create a leasehold certificate, okay? Why? A given exclusive possession, okay? That's why we get a certificate of title as conclusive evidence of ownership. Remember, lease is a form of tenure, okay? And what anything under the RTA should have a title. Remember, you've gone with the lease under the RTA five years and above. So after reflecting it on this title as an encumbrance, then we create a lease hold certificate of title. Any question on how we create a lease now? Okay. Yes, guys. Uh -huh. Now it is simple. What happens if you are leasing the entire land? Okay, you just pick out that part of mutating off. Okay, okay. So now we presume you have created a lease. Okay, you have inserted all the terms and conditions. Okay, so the presumption is we are moving on smoothly. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. But now nice that is that is in eh? that because each land you mutate off, remember it has now become a different 
plot with a different market gets that deed plan, which is independent because of its demarcations. Okay. So now we are going to get there. Okay. So the presumption is our lease is done. Okay. You have signed the lease and everything is okay. Okay. However, you're depending on the conditions we have, the most pertinent conditions we are always interested in are three subleasing. Okay. If not, payment of the premium rent. If not, the user clause. Those three, they are the major conditions. Once you breach any, it goes to the root of the lease agreement. So it is a grant for termination. Okay. So now, the first thing, as you know, the economy changes. Okay. The economy changes. <laughs> Land was fit for agricultural purposes in 1980. Currently, is fit for residential. Okay, so chances are high that you obtain the lease in 1980. However, currently your lease is still subsisting. But you see that, ah, man. Okay, we have a leasehold certificate of title, but the user clause is agriculture. To be honest, Gojina title, yeah, we have. Okay, but you know, your hands are tied because that is a condition. You cannot change. So in a Colombia, we muzi ge ya kule takari ya yubis ya tundache. Okay. So imagine you have a plot of land in a best location for commercial purposes, but the title you're having is basically for commercial. Once you change like this. It is going to be terminated. What option is available? Yes. Then we've got what we call valuation of lease agreement. Okay. Okay, we said the first one is a user clause. Another one is payment. Yes, then the third one is subleasing. Okay, so we are we are on that now. So we are going to variation so ask yourself under what circumstances can we do a report variation of a lease okay variation of a lease the first one is when we are changing a user clause when we are changing a user clause okay yeah Mark these things in oros. They'll just give you a title. They tell you Rashid wants to construct apartments near LBC. That is the land. They give you a title. But they call it so. But they tell Rashid, Yagami, Yayaga, Kaina Dala, Adiba is him. When they want to first vary the conditions to fit Rashid's interest, then you advise him to buy. Okay? So the first one is when you're changing a user clause. The second one is when we are changing premium. When we in 1980, and we in in the On your 2K, imagine, okay, your grandfather lives in land on 2000 as a premium. That's what I pay every year. When the lease is still subsisting, Muguno Mwaka, then they take in Kumyez. Imagine, yes? Okay? Rent, rent is paid annually. Okay? So look at that Kamani. Okay? Hajat Afwa comes with the 2K during this generation to pay for the lease of four acres in, in Kamocha there. Okay. So, because the, the circumstances have changed, 
you also vary. At least you negotiate to better terms of payment. Okay? Start together. Okay? Then, under what other circumstance? Okay? When you can vary. When we are extending time. Extension of time. Okay? We assume you've been given the term of 49 years. Okay? You still, you have a project that is running for 60 years. But the lease is coming to an, to an end. Your project is still ongoing. And once the time ends like this, land reverts back. <coughs> okay? So, uh -huh. so by virtue of that, you want to vary the term of time. Then you go for variation. You make an application. All of that is by way of an ordinary letter. The application for variation is by way of an ordinary letter by a lessee to the lesser. You don't go to court. Okay? It's an ordinary letter by a lessee to the lesser. Okay. Nothing like court. Okay. Are we together? So now. Okay. So now, again, we presume that everything is going on well. Okay. Remember, when you add up, you say which shall include successors assignees. The successors is nothing changes. Okay. So now, yes. Do you want? That is termination cancel. We shall get there. Yes. When you are trying to reach out to the lesser. Yes, to make some changes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in cases where the lesser doesn't allow that, what do you do? It says you right. Shivako. This is an argument. It is not a bridge. Simple as that. Yeah. It's not a bridge. Yes. Olinga ya poa. Aha. He joke with the leases. Okay. So now we presume that as of now everything is okay. We make variations and everything. Okay. However. We have what we call duties of a lesser. Okay? More powers still. Powers. Okay? Once we enter into a lease, a lesser, the owner of land, retains some rights. These rights are known as the reversionary interest. Okay? Once we enter into a lease, the lesser retains what we call a reversionary interest. You, you take what you call the lease interest. Reversionary interest. You get it? Remember, lease is created from registered land. Okay? We have someone who is on the original title. Either a male title or the freehold title. The original owner. Then you, you also have a second title of a lease. We have two titles at the same. The person who had a mild title or a freehold title retains what we call a reversionary interest. At any time, I can come, I buy off your lease interest. I take it back. You get it? And on my title, they cancel out the encumbrance of a lease. You get it? Because I have the reversionary interest. A good example, the law allows the landlord to come and inspect this land, but subject to notice and within reasonable time. Okay? Remember, 
Once, even if you're a tenant, you have exclusive possession. The landlord can't just come and enter your house. Okay? Unreasonable. Not so. However, we have circumstances where the landlord has to come to inspect it. Okay? Repair. What needs to repair? But that is because of the reversionary. But that should be subject to the notice of Alamakulamba. The landlord will come and inspect your house. Okay? So, but you also send me a reminder notice. Don't come at midnight. Okay? You may have a, a male landlord and your female tenant, and your landlord wants to come at midnight to inspect the house. Okay? <laughs> okay? So now, we are at that point, okay? Let's get back, okay? Let's get back. So now, at this point, you have your list interest. I have my reversionary interest, okay? Yes. So, I have a tenancy interest or equitable interest, okay? So now, at this point, okay, everyone is in his or her lane, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens? If we are tired of this lease, then we go for termination. So we are going to have to call termination of the lease. Okay? Termination of a lease. Okay? The, well, the duty of a lesser is to inspect the leased property and to maintain it. Okay? In case it needs repair. Then the duty of a lessee is to ensure that he or she keeps the property in, in good and tenable condition. Another person can enter a sequence renovation. Okay? <laughs> That's why they have what you call security. You pay that security man because of that. Okay? Are we together? Okay? So now, Termination. Let's go back to our RTA. It provides for different modes of termination. Hmm? Cancel the first one. Section. Even if you get here, you are still here. Section. Okay. Section. <laughs> Which section provides for the list? 101. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So let's go to the RTA. Okay. Let's go to the RTA. Okay. So now, first things first. Okay. What is the first mode of termination? That everyone, I mean, if you just wake up someone, this person knows. Yes. Remember, a lease is over a fixed period of. So, the first mode is, okay, but when you go to Oros, Council Baranya will tell you, speak, speak English. It is called influx of time, okay? Influx of time, not expiration. Influx of time, okay? <laughs> okay, so. If la so automatically once the time expires, uh huh, over your garage. Okay. If you if they don't extend, the lease has ended. Okay. Then another another way. Another way. We have surrender under section one zero eight. Now, RTA. Now, members. Okay. Let's mention also the second one. Just after surrender is known as forfeiture. Okay. Forfeiture. Let's first list all of them. I'm going to explain something I want. Okay. We say we have surrender, forfeiture, and then influx, and then merger. Magia, yes, but magia and surrender to me. I'm not saying that 
you guys are, but to me, the way when you read that law, surrender works with magic. They they move hand hand in hand. How does it operate? If I lease her my land and she feels like business is no longer working out, she does what we call what what is she surrendering? The lease interest. What do I have? The reversionary. So what does it mean? I'm going to add. What am I doing? So to me, I say magia is not a mode of termination. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. So someone has a lease, right? Okay. You have 45 years. So, but you're eyeing to extend it. So what you do is you surrender the lease back to them, apply for them. Hmm? And that's the normal practice. But as for LDC, okay? <laughs> okay? So how are we together? So me, I'm saying that magia. Is not a model. Why? Because you, your matter has come into place where the reversionary interest and the least interest are coming together. That's when matter operates. Okay? Yes, guys. Uh huh. Yes. Mm. Yes, yes, Maybe you also come on the land room so uh -huh. conduct the same business with the MC. Okay, so as a running thing, they have to come together, they match those interests, they both stay on the land. But once they merge, so the lease interest will expire automatically. Mm -hmm. Once they merge, the lease interest will cease, then the, the reversionary interest. So that means the lease is going to be cancelled out. So, so in other situation, uh -huh. Ah, so now the challenge is what we should note that merger is basically where the reversionary interest and the least interest are combined for the common interest. Okay, that, that's the least we can appreciate. So either you want to create a common business or you want to transfer from lease to freehold. So it depends, okay? Okay? But you, you can't convert before leaving out, giving out the lease interest. That's the challenge, okay? You first surrender back the lease interest, then you convert. Okay? That's the challenge. Practice is different from the law. <laughs> okay, so okay. Now let's read what the law talks about. Surrender. Section 108 of the RTA. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. It is under this act makes it surrender and determine as well as operation of law and go under the act now only after to be in post relating to background and then instead as by the word. Surrender with the death being a dust upon the risk upon the risk upon the Okay, so okay, literally what that surrender means, we have what we call factors under the law that lead to surrender. Once you lose capacity to contract, you automatically surrender. You just end us on the title that surrender. Why? A lease is a contract. Remember where we started from? Once one, you are declared the bankrupt, you cease to have the right to contract. Two, your mental capacity. As you know, factors that we have in the Contract Act, vitiating factors. Once they exist, you surrender. You don't even waste time. 
Okay? Simple as that. Yes? When you read 108, it provides for some, okay? But not everything. It gives you bankruptcy. Once you are declared bankrupt, you no longer have capacity to contract. And remember, at least is a contract. So you have no option but to surrender. Okay? Then another, it can be on your own motion. You go be coy. You surrender. Okay? You surrender back the, the interest. Okay? Simple as that. Yeah? Okay? <laughs> uh-huh. That is called re entry, it is another remaining castle. Okay? We are going there. Okay? Yeah, yeah that's how I'm talking. It's re entry. Okay? It's a form of termination. Once I re enter, okay? So now we understand surrender, merger, influx of time. Okay, are we together? Yes, then we have another mode of termination known as re entry. Okay, we are getting there. Re entry. Okay, re entry. Okay, now the challenge is the option for re entry is only and only available on grounds of non-payment okay that's the first one grounds of non-payment okay let's use a simple example yeah and i think we are going to get no go i want to re-enter wanga as you want a Brida, a visa weekend, it So I go there every weekend. This guy is not there, but during the weekly days, he doesn't leave home. But Panda is going to strike him. <laughs> okay, so let's go on. Okay, so uh -huh. forfeiture. How do we use forfeiture? Okay, forfeiture also operates on non non payment forfeiture chibanga quick visa chin to you okay to bring back what belongs to you okay for example ladies are fond of uh <coughs> okay when they say some bit food dresser i just can't okay so once you get an opportunity <laughs> okay so okay so the two remedies we have forfeiture and re-entry we have a certain act known as distress for for rains okay distress for rains Okay, no, that law where the lessee does not pay, okay, you proceed under that act distress for foreign. What remedy are you seeking for? Okay, what remedy are you seeking for? What remedy? It is called forfeiture. Okay, now chances are high. Your workshop is going to be around that area. You know why? Remember, LSC also has a remedy under the Duplicature Act, known as Relief Against Forfeiture. So now we're going to some of our no or to get rights that is that upon non-payment, this restaurant you get out. Now this time yes, on a Saturday application, okay, but end up for what? For forfeiture, but for Gandhi, lesa a process in Galoni Mubanga, Gomogobe Kutaka. Okay, you chase this person out. Umbe, once you see relief, once you see forfeiture, when they are proceeding against them, then they see just know the lesser has a remedy known as relief against 
but on what grounds you should prove to your fine equity that intention to pay it is when you get the remedy of relief against even in the normal circumstances nebo balangi road ngo banja nyina gamba kama wan nina kasente kensubira ku sande no dia kuba simo nde sande relief okay so even in leases once you want this person out and this person shows an interest of paying the law allows this person to run to court and also gets a relief known as relief against forfeiture so now when you deal with this workshop okay expect that at the end okay either you're going to be representing the lesser or the the lessee but on those remedies that's where the i is coming from they can't just forgive you like that okay they can't but chances are high you do relief against forfeiture because if you look at the workshop it is not covered and you know you've seen where they don't put emphasis is always the the ia if you've been so keen <laughs> okay so now the question is okay what happens if the lease is terminated what happens if the lease is terminated yes that's what i you've terminated a lot of leases in india and i and i authority as the district land officer okay <laughs> uh -huh. it reverts back to them to the lesser najifuna the fact is a memory more even to be a way in Begin with Indians. Some of them, their leases expired, and upon expiration, the interest goes back. So that's why they told you discuss the status of the lease. So upon termination, the status is the land reverts back to the original owner. So you should be so keen with the questions with dealing with the status. Okay, so be keen with those. So literally, we've covered leases. The rest we shall appreciate them during the course. But for purposes of leases, I've given you the, the simplest cases. Okay. But they have given you the cases even when they are categorized. So you read the laws. Okay, simple as that. But start with the case of street buses, Mount Holt. Okay, it's an English case, the oldest case of reason. Okay, so now, please, okay, we are out of time. It's nine. Okay, so kindly allow me to go through the workshop briefly so that at least you understand something. So that we can now apply the law we've been reading. Okay. So let's get our workshops chapter. Okay. Workshop one. Okay. Hold on. Let's just go through this. I'll give a hint on it. Okay. Mark this license, okay. A license is not registered. Secondly, you don't part with possession in license. A license is for a short period of time, okay. It is either a license coupled with an interest or a bare license. A, a license coupled with an interest, for example, we have people. We give a license to enter our land to extract sand. Okay. They don't lease, but once sand gets done, they move out. So their major interest is on that's it's a license coupled with. Okay. Then a bare license. Someone licenses you the land. For example, you tell someone, over T Sabaya license. Okay. So the license is just 
for a short period of time, okay? And the license, you always on the mass of the land road. But which are, again, okay, you're not protected. But at least you have that binding agreement, okay? Yes? We have a bare license and the license coupled with an interest, okay? So now let's rush through our workshop first and foremost, okay? Let's look at these learning outcomes. I told you that when you are dealing with the workshop, don't read the facts first. Read the law. After reading the law, you'll have achieved the learning outcomes first, okay? By the end of this week, the student should have effectively, okay? <clears throat> The weakest tasks are aimed at enabling the student to effectively execute instructions pertaining creation, registration, variation, and termination of a lease. Okay? Learning outcome one. Is it sorted? Yes. Then two. Distinguish a lease from a tenant and determine the appropriate remedies for breach of a lease. So you see, we've seen remedies for breach of that's why we looked at forfeiture. Those are remedies, okay? Merger, reentry, those are the remedies. In case of breach of the conditions. Then three, apply the principles of the license and easements. That one we have to read the Roads Act. How to create a road, okay? That's what they call in easements, okay? But I, probably that is in workshop too, I'm sure. Okay. Then five, I devise the law and procedure on compulsory acquisition of land. Then six, okay. Four, for sales, effectively execute instructions for obtaining access to road. I've said those ones are going to read the roads act basically. That's workshop two. Don't worry. Okay. Then six, five, we've looked at it. Then six, I devise and execute instructions on conversion of a list to free cold. So you see, that one was even in first term, non so. Yes. So, I will be good go with the learning outcomes. Yes. Now let's go to the tasks. Yes. Okay, but it's the, the learning outcomes remain the same. I'm sure. Yes. Okay. They didn't change. Just corrections, probably names and a few things. Okay. So let's go. Okay. Workshop one says that. Please study the list certificate title provided and identify a features on each. <laughs> now, even if I don't take it with the title, one, they want you to identify the lesser or the leasing authority. When you get the title open, ask yourself who gave out the lease. You will see that either the district land board or Uganda Land Commission or an individual. That's the first feature they want. Okay, then the second feature, they want conditions of the lease. You open the conditional page. I've not yet looked at those titles, but I know things they are there because I've been on in this in these titles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they create problems. Okay. So you go and look at the conditional page. The lease is for what condition? That's the feature. Then another feature, the lease is for how long? Time. What if your client wants to buy land on the title that is expiring, okay? Then another feature on, of a lease. Premium. Yes? Area. Area. What acreage are you taking, okay? <laughs> then also, in most cases, lease titles have these arguments in the middle. You get it? Yes. They have lease agreements which state the amount, the premium, and the range. Okay? So when you look at your titles, 
<coughs> okay, let me give you an example. Look at this title. You see? So when you are looking at it, okay, you first come here. Okay. You see? You see how it is. Okay. <coughs> this is the title you are doing. Okay. This is the first title. Okay. It's the test suit. Okay. This is the title you are testing. Okay. So when you look at this title, first look at it. Okay. It says the least land edge rate in the plant attacks there too. Okay. Then they say, who is the issuing authority? Township, municipal, city, at neighbor district, which is so. Who is the issuing authority? Kampala District Land Board. Then it was okay. What is the acreage? The acreage is zero point zero six four hectares. Okay. Yes, it is just here. Okay. Then after it is for how long? In most cases. It is just here for 49 years. Okay. Then you come here. Who has granted the lease? Is it an individual or a company? You come here, proprietorship. Okay. Joseph, Ayigo, and Jessica, and who you, what does this mean? Go to Article 26. Okay. Land can be owned jointly, it is joint ownership. Okay. Then proceed. Okay. What does this mean? Okay, then come check, go to the next page. Okay, proprietorship, they are still the same. Then come here to the lease agreement. So the conditions, they are here in the lease agreement. So you read and see, okay. The premium, the rent is, okay, 130, imagine. <laughs> okay, so the conditions you want are down here. Then the listing here by convenience with the lesser as follows. Those are the conditions. Okay, simple as that. This is the deed plan, and then the title is done. Simple as that. Okay, so that has been the test to basically. Okay. This is where this lease was created. You get me? This lease, you have titles. You have titles. This is the name of the name. When I'm coming, you remind me on man. Okay? We have different titles. Okay? We have leases from mile. Okay? Okay. This one is from freehold. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, council. <laughs> then let's get back. Okay. This one, that's a Okay. <laughs> It depends. Some of them, if it doesn't have the lease agreement, it has a conditional page. This one has no conditional page. Okay. It always have a valuation report. Okay. Yes. So let's proceed. Then part two, that says that uh, Kamanzi Regional Referral Hospital is a government hospital. What does that imply? Okay. B, entries. People would... Okay. <laughs> the entries. <laughs> okay. Let's proceed. People will handle at least. We should leave them with some assignments. Okay. So, Two, they're saying that uh, Kemans Regional Referral Hospital is a government hospital. What does that imply? Okay, no. What does that imply? It is a government entity. It has capacity to own land. Okay, 
So we go on. Okay. And proud owner of freehold land measuring 50 hectares located at a beautiful hill in Western Uganda near DRC border. So they ask yourself, it has capacity to own land, so it can own. If it can own, it can deal with the land the way it deals fit. Okay. The hospital buildings cover only around 10 hectares of the 50 hectares. The hospital administration is of a view that it could collect money from the other part of the land. They already have some potential persons interested in the land. One, okay, Ashtel International Limited, first stop there, okay? A Malaysian telecom company registered in Uganda. Okay, is it a, a, a is it a Ugandan company? No. So what can it own? <laughs> ah, remember this land is a free hold. So what does that mean? These guys are going for a lease. But in your lease, what conditions they gave you the user the user clause for what? Okay, they're saying that wants to set up masts of the highest peak and utilize five acres of the land. It also intends to set up a factory, manufacturing mobile phones, phone accessories and batteries that use a lot of coltan and lithium. They intend to mine that the coltan and lithium from the same land because it is said there are a lot of deposits in that particular land. You see the user clause? Yes. So they have given it to you. for industrial purposes, mining, and so you don't exceed that. They have given you the user. So you will copy some other lease agreement, your automatic. So that is the user clause. The rest, they will remain the same. Okay? Then two, Greenery of Glory Limited, a company incorporated in Uganda five years ago. Incorporated, that means it's a Ugandan. Okay, it's a Ugandan. This is government land. They can't just sell. You get me? Okay. Council Russian. Yes, yes. Council, please hold, hold on a little bit. Okay. I want to. No, I was telling that I'm going to log out. I'm going to make you a host. Okay, it's okay. Okay, so then yes, I'll be back. It's okay. They are interested in 10 acres of that land to plant trees and develop the eco forest, but also promote eco tourism. What does this imply? Okay, what does this imply? Which entity deals with such actions? NFA. Now, first get the license from NFA. Okay, they want to deal with forestry, not so. So they need a license from NFA. Okay. Then, <laughs> so now, okay. So they are saying, okay. Here they are saying that a device on the feasibility of each of the prospective lease. So what does this mean? One of them can't can go for lease, another one can't go for lease. So for you, we look at it and say, mm, I think, okay? This company is a Ugandan company. So why do you give them a lease? Why should they pay? Okay? So just go with the first company, give them a lease, okay? Then, draw a lease agreement for Greenery and the hospital. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. It was amended, yeah? mm, Because I knew this can it can't happen. Okay? It can't. Greenery can't enter into a lease. You get it? The, this part has been amended on the workshop. Okay? This task is no longer there. Draw an argument for greenery. Is it still there? Yes. Still there. Uh-huh. 
what is there? What else has been amended on that part? Okay. They have added a question. Okay. So, what you do, you discuss. Okay. Yes, both parties can enter into a lease. But who is the most appropriate person to enter into a lease? Okay. So, you choose the most appropriate. In the first part, okay, when they, are, what they have asked you, who, which parties they want you to look for the lesser and the lessee. Then you draft what they have told you. Simple as that. Why? Here, they have not given you the user clause. So you should be mindful of that. Okay? So what does this mean? Ogenda genda mu schedule. There are the terms and conditions you're going to use. What we call the implied terms. You go in the schedule that we saw okay because they have not they have not given you the conditions for greenery so you are using the conditions in the act okay are we together yes yes yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. then part c Mm. Yeah, it remains okay it remains yes okay it remains so you discuss you show that both of them can enter into the lease so you give your part according to you who is the most appropriate that's why they have told you who who are the parties so you discuss the possibility of greenery and also discuss the possibility of action. Yes. Okay. Then part B, Uganda Land Commission. Okay. Uganda Land Commission is in charge of land developed with eight semi-detached formerly pool houses that belong to the defacant East Africa Airways. As per the share as per the sharing of properties between the East African commun community states, the Ugandan government took over ownership of the property management by Uganda Land Commission. Okay, so what does that mean? That this land is vested in Uganda Land Commission. So Uganda Land Commission has ownership. Okay, we go on. Sitting tenants then were allowed to buy the properties and got leases for 60 years with immediate effect from 1983 as the tenants in common on title described as that that. Okay. Theory of the leases, the leases are interested in selling that interest to Patel. Okay. A Pakistan born but now Ugandan citizen since five years ago. Patel wants to separate the three houses from the rest and get independent title. Uganda Land Commission has no objection if the process and the procedures are properly followed. A, advise Patel on the status of the leases. What? Look at 1983, okay? It was for how many years? Okay, sixty. So, so over over the charity. Okay, you first count. What's charity? How many years to go? Yes, how many years to go? So the status is these guys are still are still the owners. Oh, so what does that mean? They have a right to, to sell. Okay? They have a right to sell to Patel. Okay? Remember, there are three different owners. So each owner can enter into a separate. Okay? What does that mean? There is going to be change in ownership. Okay? Change in ownership. So now, ask yourself. You have a right to sell a lease without consent of the lesser. Yes. 
Okay? So if the lesser accepted, then the transaction can take place. That's why they told you, first give them the detailed status. Can they enter into the transaction or they cannot? So this, the status is the lease is still subsisting and the lesser has given consent. So that means they can proceed and sell a lease. Okay. They can proceed and sell the lease. Okay. So now, B, explain in details the requisite steps and procedure until Patel gets his only certificate of title. Okay? Yes, can. Mm. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yes. Now, those are the steps down here. Eh? The steps. Remember, it is, okay? They are theory. They bought it as a whole. So what does that mean? Okay? So, remember... Okay? So, when you look at that, it is then as in common. They should stay at the same time. So how should they stay at the same time? Okay? Yes. Okay? Yes? We are joint tenants. Okay. Okay. Now, the challenge is appreciating tenancy in common and joint okay we have what we call Okay. Let's let's okay. We end the session. Uh -huh. So let's get back. So, what is bringing issues? Okay, tenants in common and joint. So the facts indicate that these guys are tenants in common. So ask yourself, what are the characteristics of tenants in common? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But each one has brought a particular part that, that is a lot of the And you want to try to understand what you want to But remember, it is a single title, but it has different interests. What does that mean? Each person has to give him, okay, his interest, not so, because they want to sell at the same time. That's the challenge. They want to sell at the same time. So if they are selling at the same time, every person is going to give independent <laughs> documentation that we need, okay? That is it. So now after getting, remember, this is what you call divided shares. Each person has to give him in regards to his or her share. share. Okay? So you have to obtain for the three persons. Then after that, you lodge, okay, for the transfer. Okay, once you lodge, they will cancel out the tenancy in common and the title will return into single ownership. Okay? So the, what, they, what they want here, they want you to discuss termination of tenancy in common. That's the, the steps they want. Because once you do termination, it turns back to single ownership. Then you start, because he wants the three plots independently 
You get it. Mm. So when you get the three plots, okay, in one title, then you're going to mutate them independently. But the, what they basically want, that process of termination of tenancy in common. That's what they want. Okay? Yes. <laughs> okay? So now, yes? <laughs> yes. At the end, he's going to get three titles. Okay? Then, assume that Patel, after getting his lease certificate, of title in December 2022, desires to convert the same to freehold. Advise him on the legal import and feasibility of this. Okay, now, first, he's a citizen currently. He can, okay, he's a citizen, he can convert to freehold. Okay, next thing I'm saying, as a citizen, okay, because the law restricts him, okay. But Kashiri Eliazali holds lease of 65 years with immediate effect from 1990, granted by Uganda Land Commission, described as yes, KCC. So you underline that it is now that. Because the first question was on Uganda Land Commission, so they've also included the district land board. Okay, so that's what about but they have the Uganda Land Commission. Okay, so they are saying that it should buy KCC. Okay, described as that land uh, land steward at Nagulu, Upper East Road. The lease agreement executed between KCC and Kahiri indicated the user as residential with a development condition of a house worth 150 million. <laughs> uh -huh. Within the first five years, okay? After which the lease will be automatically enlarged to 49 years. So ask yourself, did Kahiri perform the condition or not. If he didn't perform, the lease automatically canceled. If he performed, the lease automatically, but the question for determination, the 49 years start counting after five years. So you first count. So that means the lease of 49 starts counting from 1995. <laughs> You get it, okay? <laughs> That's the challenge with the question. They gave him what he called the initial lease of five years from 1990 up to, with the condition that within the five years, he should have developed that, that place with a house worth 150. Okay? That question was amended. Okay, so within the first five years, okay, within the first five years, if you don't do the development, the lease cancels. You get it. So let's go on. Okay, that's saying that uh, Kahiri Kahi developed the land with a state of the art presidential house with eight bedrooms, self contained to ensure each of their seven children has a bedroom. Since 1998, Kahi'i has been, Kahiri has been Religious. religiously paying the annual ground rent at Kampala District Land Board and is paid up to date. However, in 2014, Kahiri's youngest daughter got married and so all the children were now out of the house leaving him and his wife in a huge house alone so he decided to convert underline to convert <laughs> change of so he decided to convert it into a guest house so does this still conform to 
residential, it is now commercial. So as it is a condition, so what is that? It is a breach. Okay? Once you break a condition, enforcement. Okay? So they are saying that, and he modified it further to create 30 rooms for guests. The contract final stages and grand opening is to allow his first guests okay is slated on on that okay in june 2022 the district land board got wind of this conversion of the use of the residential commercial district land board has decided to terminate the lease and take over physical possession Ah. It is a breach. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, now let me tell you. Always be a lawyer. Okay. Be at that side where you're going to see the devil. Underline the, the starting date. Underline the starting date with the grand opening. When is it? May. Okay. So her sister they utilizing it. Yes. So uh huh. You see, Annie, me I will say it's still still residential. Not and so you possess. <laughs> but it is not in use. Okay. Why? What now? Why do you think they have told you? Advise Kahiri first. So what is he going to do to avoid the problems? Go make an application for variation before it, before the guys become a problem mm. to vary the user close simple as that okay then advice Kampala okay ah. so Kampala district land board can they take physical possession underline the word physical possession it means what re-entry what is the, what under the law when do you use re-entry they told you up the guy has been religiously paying underline religiously paying so they look for another remedy not that <laughs> not physical uh, it have told you as paid up to date underline up to date so they can't go for physical let them look for another remedy <laughs> <Hey. laughs> which remedy can they go for let them go for damages at least but they can't use physical possession because the law gives under what circumstances you go for physical possession none payment okay yeah. Yes. Let them sue for breach of contract. Cancel. You take your time. You read under what circumstances does that remedy operate? Forfeiture and re-entry. You will see that under your facts they don't operate. And it's what SCCA wants. Okay. Want? If they want physical possession, that means they want to re enter. Okay. But can they? Okay. That's what you should look at. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's proceed. Okay. So now, part C, part C requires you to draft a variation deed okay a variation deed okay then see then part two assume that Tahi'i insisted instead of converting and changing the user of the property instead decided to let it out to an international ngo for one year tenants renewable for the next four years okay the ngo intends to have its country director accommodation accommodated therein paying that money per month wow. one year in advance however the ngo requires some modifications to be made to it building small 
gazebo and concrete fence to replace the current natural cage. The NGO is willing to pay now, but allow one month period to have modifications executed. Advice on the feasibility of the modification requested by the NGO and authorization required, if any. Okay, this is sub what? So that means here, remember, in the in their initial list, this term wasn't wasn't there. So they have to first seek consent mm -hmm. from Kampala District Landing. Okay, so that they can sub sub lease. Okay. <laughs> then the, the, yes, the fact is when you enter into a lease agreement, you get exclusive possession. Okay. So what does that mean? You are at liberty to use it the way you want. But the challenge is these guys want some modifications. Okay. But these modifications, it is renovation, you not so? Can you remove it without consent of the landlord? Okay. So you first write to the landlord, they allow, remember, they're just going to be tenancies. Okay. I now refer to we care about banks. Ogambo ya galakwe zimira ushifume. Okay. Okay. So, can they enter into a tenancy agreement? They can. Okay. They are delivered. Okay. But subject to the interest of the other gentleman. Okay. You put that into consideration. Okay. Then. Supposing the NGO decides to terminate the tenants after only eight months, advise on the modalities of termination. That's what called termination by notice. Okay, notice to surrender. Bakoi bagamba mwaka gumu. See what you Cut they want to go before, so they are going to surrender. Simple as that. Okay, but you have to notify me. Okay, okay. Ah. part D, okay, the last part and we call it a yeah. year, okay, a. it says a name is a widow who held a lease of 50 years duration with immediate effect as joint tenants with her late husband. Okay? Now you get the difference? This is joint survivorship. The husband died. Who is the owner? Uh -huh. The lesser, a one matter or chide, decided to sell the reversionary interest. Okay? Two, two acres and Annie's oldest daughter, Dorothea Munavi decided to purchase it. Hmm. Okay. The registered proprietor, RRI, RRP, okay. I'm landlord of a chain. And landlord of Anen is now her daughter. Anen and Dorothea have mutually agreed that the freehold be relieved from the lease encumbrance. <laughs> Anen has decided to retire into the village in, in Kamuli district. She doesn't want any payment from the daughter and is more than willing to do whatever it takes to have the lease removed from Dorothea. Which remedy is that? Which remedy is that? <laughs> Who is willing? Mama Dorothea. Okay. Mama Dorothea is the who? Look, look for the remedy, which is at the initiative of the, the less it is called surrender. Because on surrender, you don't pay anything. You just enter into an agreement. You draft a surrender deed and it ends there. Okay. I, whenever you're reading, ask yourself, I'm representing who? And this person is acting as fool. 
Once you learn that, you will give the right remedy always. Okay? Then, explain the procedure, necessary document to your getting. Then the last part. Okay. Okay. That is just a mere argument. Drafting of the surrender deed, registration, and then filing the same to the registrar, and then the lease is removed as an encumbrance. Simple as that. Okay. Then two. Two says that um Kefas Kafire is the registered proprietor of land described as that plot that measuring 10 acres land at Kaulu village. In the year 2006, Kefas created a lease over four acres of his land in favor of Nawamba for 49 years. Nawamba got a lease certificate of title and developed with a housing estate. Later in 2020, Kefas leased the residue of six acres to Namese for 49 years and a lease certificate title was issued. Both leases were noted on the mile certificate of Kefas. Kefas has now agreed, okay, both of his leases, okay, Okay. Okay. Kefas. Okay. Kefas has agreed. Okay. That both Kefas has now agreed with both his leases to sell the reversionary interest to each of them, four and six acres, respectively. Advice on the documents to be executed. Which documents? Okay. Which documents? First and foremost, members, listen, listen. First and foremost, the title is one. It has two encumbrances. So the first thing is mutation. Okay. So, but before you mutate off, they are going to do boundary opening, which is the surveying. They put the coordinates of each and every plot. Then after they do mutation, but on the mutation, which plot gets off first? The four acres, because this one I've told you, the residue. You get it, okay? So that means the last one takes the residue title. The residue title will have his or her encumbrance, and this one also has his or her own encumbrance. Then what follows? Okay, then you terminate the lease by, you terminate the lease first. Okay, you terminate the lease. So which mode of termination is applicable when it is the initiative of the lesser? Here, the lesser is the one giving out. The two associates about the lessee. Okay? So, for Fetcher, what is what is applicable? Okay? What is applicable? Yes, guys. Mm. Uh -huh. Now, remember, the lease is going to be there. But now, once this person gives out, he has surrendered his his interest, so it is going to be merged with the lease interest. Not so. The reversionary interest is going to cease because he has agreed to give it out. Remember, for a lease to be there, we, shall, we should have the reversionary here and the lease interest. So now the reversionary interest, this guy is giving it out. So that means the two interests are going to be matched. So, emu webuli yamu emu, chivachi webuli. Okay? So, the last remedy is magia. Okay? The document, you need mutation reform and just a deed because these are things you should agree upon. We should be in writing. 
Okay, so allow me bring this session to an end. It has been a marathon. Okay, okay, they are closing. This day. Okay, so members, let's rush. They are closing the gate. Okay, let's rush. They are closing the gate. That's the time they end the meeting. Still on it. Then. Thank <laughs> you.